Welcome to this Pinnacle Studio tutorial. In this video, we'll show you how to use the power of keyframing to elevate the professionalism of your projects. Now, Pinnacle Studio allows you to control every single property individually with keyframes, giving you total control and allowing you to create some really dynamic videos. In this example, I'm creating a video showcasing the activities that are available at a beach resort. I've got a video clip of the beach here that I'm going to use as the base layer for the finished video with some animated text showing the name of the beach resort. I've then got four video clips showcasing the different activities that are available to tourists, and I want to animate them with keyframes so that they appear one by one, filling the screen for a couple of seconds, and then zooming out again to sit over the four quarters of the base video clip. When keyframing, it's important to be a bit organized and plan out how you want the end result to look, so I've set these clips to start at six second intervals and then to all finish at the same time with markers set at handy positions so I can easily jump around to the different times that I know I'm going to want to add keyframes to. So, let's add some keyframes. We'll work on the first clip, so we'll just click the eye symbol to turn the top three tracks off, so we can see the clip we're working on. Click our first marker to go to the start of the first clip, and then make sure the properties panel is displayed for the clip we want to work on. Here, we can see all of the properties that can be individually keyframed. Sometimes, we will want keyframes on different properties to occur at the same time, so that two parameters change with each other, and sometimes we'll want keyframes to manipulate properties separately at different times. This is now possible within Pinnacle Studio and can make some great effects. For this first clip, I want to animate the clip appearing from the centre of the screen, and I think I want that to take two seconds until the clip fills the screen. My project is at 30 frames per second, and pressing Shift and X will move ahead 10 frames, so if I want to skip ahead two whole seconds, I just need to press Shift and X six times. We'll add a size keyframe here, then press the previous keyframe icon to jump back to the start of the clip, and then change the size here to zero. If we play the result, we can see it's a good start. Let's try adding a corner curve that happens at the same time as the size changes. Again, how the clip currently looks at two seconds in is what we want to be the result of our changes, and we want to change how the clip starts. So we skip to the second keyframe on the size parameter by pressing previous keyframe, and then set a keyframe for corner curve. Then press previous keyframe again, and set corner curve to 100. Now, when we play the result, we can see the clip starts off with rounded edges, which become more straight as the clip fills the screen. So we can see we can use keyframing of two properties to work together at the same time. So next, I want the clip to stay as it is for two seconds, before zooming back out to fill the upper left quarter of the screen. So let's skip to our second keyframes, which are two seconds in, jump ahead another two seconds by pressing Shift and X six times, and then set another keyframe for size and corner curve, and one for each of the position parameters as well. Then skip forward another two seconds, and this time I'm going to set size to 40, as I don't want the clip to take up the whole upper left quarter of the video, I still want to see a bit of the beach scene underneath as the other clips get added. Then I'll set the position to minus 25 horizontal, and plus 25 for vertical, and the corner curve to 50. This looks great, but I think I want a border to fade in around the clip, so we'll skip to our third keyframe, set a border width keyframe at zero, then skip forward and set it to 10. Let's pick a color for it from the sky so it matches our intro title. Let's play the result. I'm happy with that, it's dynamic and interesting and will look great with all four clips displaying in the same way. And we can see that we've started using keyframes on new properties, starting at different times from our previous size and corner curve properties. So you can see, you can control different parameters completely independently from each other. You'll notice that the end keyframes line up perfectly with the start of the next clip. This is one of the reasons why it helps to have a mental idea of your video before you start animating. Let's zoom through and recreate the same effect for each of the subsequent clips. So here I'm creating the same effect for the parasailing clip. And now I'm onto the surfing clip. For this one, instead of the clip size getting smaller on the second half of the keyframes, I want the clip to stay the same size, but crop the video instead, so that the surfer is still the same size in the clip. 
I can do this by setting crop keyframes instead of size keyframes. In this case, cropping each side by 30% seems to work fine. I have to change the value for the border width though, as the clip isn't scaling down in size this time. Instead of going to 40% size, it's staying at 100% but just being cropped, so the border value needs to be 4 instead of 10 to be consistent with the other clips. Let's just add the keyframes for the final clip and we're almost there. So now you can see each clip zooms in from the center, displays for two seconds in the middle of the screen, and then zooms out to a quarter of the screen. So next, to finish the video, I want all of the clips to move off of the screen at the same time, while the beach scene fades away, and then the beach resort name is shown one more time. So starting at our penultimate marker, I'll set position keyframes for each of our overlay clips. Jump ahead three seconds, then set new position keyframes so that each of them move off of the screen at the same speed. And I'll just repeat this for the other three clips. Now we'll fade out the beach scene at the same time. We can do this via the clip handle. But as you're a keyframing wizard now, you can do this via the opacity parameter in the clip's properties. Then let's have a slight zoom effect as the title appears to make it a bit more dynamic. and then a quick opacity fade in as well. I've also added some titles to each of the resort's activities. So let's see the finished result. You should now have a great idea of the power that keyframes can bring to your projects. There's more parameters that can be keyframed than we've had time to go over here, and the only limit is really your imagination on the sort of effect you want to achieve. If you're handy with Coral Draw or other design softwares, you could even bring in different layers of character animations and animate them to create your own 2D animations. With Pinnacle Studio, the choice is yours. Thanks for watching.